Okay, so I will call to order uh, this special um, <clears throat> joint meeting with the city of Batavia uh, and the park district um, at 6.02. Debbie, could you please call the roll? Yes, Riley? Here. Connelly? Here. Tillman? Here. Gray? Here. And Callahan? Here. All the Wolf, thank you. There's a little bit of uh, background noise, um, and I don't know if maybe somebody needs to mute their microphone. Okay, that's better. Okay. And then we'll call to order the Committee of the Whole um, special meeting for 6 p.m. with the uh, Park Board, 6.03. If we could get roll call. Miller? Here. Rosado? Zada. Beck? Here. Matt? Here. Chancet? Chancet? Zoffa? Here. Wolf? Here. Barron? Here. Lehman? Lehman? Ayazi? Here. Malay? Here. Your here. Sarone here. Vogel singer here. We are eleven out of fourteen. Okay, so we have eleven out of fourteen. All right. Um, the item on the agenda tonight is discussion of the Batavia River corridor master plan with Hitchcock Design. And who do we have from Hitchcock tonight? Hi, I am Lacey Lawrence with Hitchcock Design Group, um, project manager. We also have Bill Inman from Hitchcock Design Group and Steve Conjures from Hitchcock Design Group, as well as John Woody from WBK Engineering. Okay, thank you. And then will they have their yep, I'm gonna be screen? Sharing here. I'm sure they have a... I can't share while another participant is sharing. Anthony, are you a host and can provide Lacey with the ability to share her screen? Give me one second here. All right, Lacey, you should receive a message so that you can uh, share. Everyone see our screen? Yes. Yes. First, um, I think Bill had a few opening comments, so I'll let him kind of kick it off first. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Good to see everybody. Thanks for uh, meeting with us tonight. Um, let's kick this off. So tonight, what we're gonna do is review four possible planning approaches to how the master plan could approach the dam and depot pond relationship. Each of the vision boards we're gonna go through tonight illustrates the general interrelationships between the dam and depot pond under different planning scenarios and highlights, uh, of course, some possible design opportunities created by each of the approaches. Uh, each of these vision boards really build on the studies found within the uh, IDNR's alternative evaluation report from December of 2000. But uh, each of the, of the concepts we're showing you tonight will, of course, require much more technical analysis to determine the full impact of each approach. So let's unpack these concepts. I'm going to turn it back over to Lacey, and she's going to run the screen and, and walk you through the concepts, and then we'll get your feedback. All right, great. Thank you. So as Bill mentioned, we prepared four concepts that we're presenting to you today. So we've labeled them here. Kind of, this is a comparison matrix between all the options, so A, B, C, and D. So they're not really the rank because each of them has based on these metrics that we've evaluated them for some provide additional opportunities that the other might not um, so we kind of want to run through these more in detail we're kind of breaking it down from river ecology benefits recreation benefits um, some dam and depot pond specifics as well as economic impact and so this is kind of where we end up breaking down 
cost. And again, this is a wide range and it needs to be fully evaluated um, and priced based on some other constraints. And once we have some more detailed analysis, um, can kind of refine this as we go. But this includes just the price for um, the modification for the dam in Depot Pond and not necessarily any of the other optional recreation um, and river options that we are gonna be presenting today. With that, I'll zoom out. All right, so this is option A. So this was one of the concepts that was evaluated in the alternatives analysis report that we reviewed. And so in this concept um, includes the removal, full removal of the dam in this area here and involves creating an earthen burn that connects the northernmost point of the river walk um, to the land. And doing so, the removal um, results in a lowering of the water elevation upstream of the dam, so approximately six feet. Obviously, following modeling, we'll know a more detailed um, extent of what that would mean upstream. But just for this conversation, so we're just saying it's going to lower about six feet. And so in order to maintain the elevations of Depot Pond, this dam will separate them, these two water features, and then will require um, kind of routine pumping in order to maintain the elevation in the pond. So with that, some additional kind of options, you know, comp images that we're showing. So the dam removal kind of picture, we have the option to create some additional in-stream features, whether it's pools, ripples, um, additional bank stabilization and in-stream habitat, native restoration, and as well as some nature trails that might then connect the North River Walk up to um, the, the pathway that's here along the water's edge, as well as maybe providing some additional opportunities to access the, the river and the dam. So again, some of the key highlights that it does maintain Depot Pond, it does modify um, the existing dam. Uh, some other option you know, that comes out of it is that we will require some additional pumping in order to maintain the elevation, but it does um, offer some additional kind of recreation opportunities. So that's kind of where this concept um, lies in the pros and the cons. One thing to think about with this one, uh, you see before you switch, is yep. that, uh, um, which is a little challenging to see just in the plan view, is that the depot pond elevation, the normal water elevation is intended to be essentially where it's at today. And of course the Fox River elevation with the dam being removed and the earthen berm separating the two systems, would be um, plus or minus six foot below the water surface of the pond itself. So it would essentially be a perched pond above a uh, river system next to it that's uh, approximately six foot lower. Great. Then option B. So again, this was another similar concept that was evaluated in the alternatives report. So in this option, Here's the existing dam. So we're proposing just a modification to the dam. So it's currently about uh, six and a half feet in height. So in this concept, we're reducing it to about a foot and a half and then creating a series of steps in order to get back up to the six foot height here. So in doing this, it creates um, passable, you know, for um, non-motorized watercraft to be able to pass through the dam only at high water conditions. But in doing so, it does allow the water level elevations of Depot, Tom, Depot Pond to be maintained at the current elevation that it is now. So in doing so, obviously we wanna be able to allow portage because obviously we can only go through here in high water conditions. So in this case, we're proposing, you know, um, ways to pull out of the water and let back into the water downstream. Because here kind of, this is the concept of what it will look like. It's kind of these series of rock weirs. So they'll drop about a foot and a half at each location here until we get down to the current water elevation of zero um, going downstream here. So, so it's similar to come some of the other the options before we presented, obviously opportunities for additional trails, opportunities for additional water access, uh, including a launch, but also hits the spot of being able to maintain Depot Pond. Um, so the downside of this one is because since we are creating essentially a new impoundment, upstream of the current impoundment, this option is less likely to be funded by IDNR. 
Um, so those are kind of the main highlights of this one. And obviously with this, since Deepo Pond is connected still to the, the river, naturally, there is no need to um, have artificial pumping to maintain the water elevations of this pond. So the major differences between the option A and option B so far is that option B does maintain the existing impoundment, if you will. So there will not be a water elevation lowering of the, of the river there. And therefore, because the impoundment remains, then Depot Pond remains as an online uh, connection to the river system as it is today. And, and so obviously we're creating like an earthen berm connecting from Duck Island to the north end of the river walk in order to do so. Right, so that is option B. Option C is, an, is a new alternative that wasn't evaluated in the evaluation report. So in this concept, we are proposing a full removal of the, of the current dam, which would then in turn drop the of surface water elevation upstream of the dam by approximately six feet. Um, in this concept though, in order to have maintained some amount of depot pond, it's not the full um, current um, surface area that depot pond is now, but it, it's a smaller version of it. This would require some additional excavation. So that way depot pond remains in line with the same elevation as the river once it drops six feet. So this water will drop six feet from what it is currently, but once we dredge and excavate it deeper, we will have some amount of surface water um, present. So with the, this, the material that we end up excavating from Depot Pond in this area can be used to kind of backfill the, the south portion of Depot Pond, which then can be converted into parks or open space. And so we did provide some kind of images as to what could be included there. Obviously this will be, um, if this option is selected, is something we can evaluate and propose further as we go into the kind of the second phase of Envision, which will include the entire corridor north to south. So kind of take these with a, a little bit of a grain of salt of what could be included just kind of to open the horizons. So obviously in this case, we still have the options to do um, additional in-stream features since we are lowering the water elevation upstream, whether that's you know, riffles, pools, rocks, um, barbs, natural area restoration. So again, this space could be um, more planned you know, space, whether it's you know, shelters and picnic areas, or it can be more natural areas, whether it is just a restored natural system, which might have just walking trails through it, boardwalks, you know, so this is kind of open for, um, open for planning. So this case obviously would be um, funded through IDNR since it's not putting back a new impoundment or a new dam. There is some options for connectivity um, with the, the trail system. So that's kind of what this one entails. So just to cap uh, um, a, a couple of other uh, hydrological um, uh, components that Lacey had mentioned here is that uh, with option A being the um, the perched contained depot pond that requires pumping. And then the second concept requiring a new dam to be installed in order to maintain the impoundment. We asked, how can we accomplish both uh, to the degree possible without having uh, a pumping scenario or a separated water system scenario? So we do believe that with the removal of the dam and the lowering of the river that would naturally occur and the uh, uh, loss of the impoundment, that we can create an online system for some open water and depot pond to a smaller degree. But um, as you're visualizing this, uh, the depot pond water elevation again would be six foot below plus or minus where it is today. So it will look significantly different, um, but the design opportunity that's created there is the recapturing of some real estate uh, right in the Riverwalk area for other land uses. And the fourth option, this was another option that was evaluated in the alternatives report. So in this option, we are removing um, the current dam fully. And so it does, again, reduce the upstream surface water elevation by approximately six feet. But in this concept, instead of um, cost of dredging and backfilling, uh, 
Also with the water, lo water level dropping about six feet, essentially all of Depot Pond um, would become some sort of land, whether it's natural area restoration, kind of as it gets closer to the river, most of this could be more natural areas with trails. And then again, a parks and open space in the south portion that is open for interpretation, whether it's more developed or still remains fully natural and has additional trails. So obviously, again, this is another option we're just kind of presenting for this concept that could make some sort of trail connection up to Duck Island. Again, um, open for discussion on, on those points, but essentially, yes, removes the dam and it doesn't require any additional kind of dredging, um, excavating, backfilling, other than kind of natural restoration. So this is very similar to option A, with the exception that of, of, of the berm not being built. And like Lacey mentioned, the um, adaptive reuse of the depot pond area would be a, it could be anything, right? But uh, probably logically some combination of natural system restoration, given its adjacency to the river and some usable, programmable, developable park space. And so those are our four concepts. So um, with that, I think we can open it up to any questions. I can kind of zoom through these again if we have specific questions on specific options. But I guess from the outcome of today's meeting, we have next week is our public engagement with the, with the community. So the outcome of today, we would hope to kind of determine whether we want to present all four of these concepts, two concepts, one concept, um, and kind of what amount or what degree of um, detail on some of the future improvements we want to present like, to the community for, a, for their feedback. I have a quick question. I'm from um, Tara from the Park District. Um, it, who will work on obtaining these grants from IDNR if that's one of the routes that's chosen? Is that a Park District responsibility? Is that a City of Batavia responsibility? How does that work? And what is the likelihood of that happening? I think it would be shared. Um, okay. I think Batavia, the city, would be the lead agency in it, but I think okay. it would be a shared um request correct um in previous conversations with idnr um they would like to see us enter into a memorandum of understanding that while uh, the city of batavia and the park district are cooperating on the project that idnr's contract if you will would be with the city of batavia in, in terms of the, this presentation, are we able to get like a printout or an email of these slides to be able to look at them a little bit more closely? Too? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I thought that I sent that out yesterday. You might Did have, anybody? I, you might have. I might have missed it. Okay. No problem as well. Um, they will be put up on the website okay. as well. We just wanted to have the opportunity to meet with you tonight to make sure these were the four, or as Lacey said, if there are only three that you would like to move forward with. Be happy um, to do that. This is John Tillman from the Park District. I have a couple of questions really centered around programming and recreation <clears throat> for the different options. In option one, there's a lot of water pumping. Um, in option two, there is deeper water. Would either one of those allow the depot pond to freeze? Because um, you know, once you start pumping water, the water is moving it's, and everything else six feet deep uh, is that the same depth as it is now i thought i think it's a little deeper would it freeze over enough for ice skating on there in the concept a and b they propose the current surface water elevation as it is today is planned to be maintained obviously we have to do some additional modeling to ensure whatever this you know the dam removal plus berm will create um, but the intent, the vision of these concepts was that it was going to be maintained at the current elevation that it is now. So with freezes now. Um, so that, ex that explains number two, but once you start pumping water in, in option one, that moves the water. Moving water doesn't freeze as readily. So do, in your opinion, would the depot pond freeze in option one if we continually pump water to, kept, to keep the elevation? I see. I can 
I, I believe it would. Um, and the water pumping would specifically be for maintaining the elevation of the, of the water. And then the, effectively the pumping could cease um, until such time where it needed to be made up again. Now this of course, uh, um, you know, uh, would require that the water quality not have a bunch of, you know, laden salts yeah. and then things like that, of course. But, yeah. um, but yes, uh, uh, it, 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 it wouldn't pump to the degree of creating a current continuously, um, if that's the question. Yeah, and that is my question. And I have a, one last question, and this is to uh, somebody on the park district. In option three, you can see that the park and open space has taken over where the current depot pond is. I, I believe I see a little thing here where um, the Peg Bond Center is, which means the boat launch and uh, all is down by this new park and open space. Would there be an opportunity to move those things further north to where the new and create some sort of new launch so we can still maintain that program? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> all the space open for interpretation. And so, yes, if we if it's still a desire to have some sort of launch and access to Depot Pond, obviously, when we have more detailed modeling of what this will look like, we can kind of decide we want where we want it on Depot Pond. But yes, I would say launches and access to the pond are still available in this concept. Okay, thank you. John, while you're still there, one of the things that I remember from when we had looked at turning the pond into a separate entity, you know, walled off from the, the river, was that it would really be determined on how much water was leaving the pond, how much would have to be pumped back in, and that would determine what you'd have to do to let it sit to freeze, to pick a level that if you knew what that would be in the end, and that really the only way we're going to know that is when the berm is built and you decide how we wall off the other overflows that are there today with the canoe cut and the drain that's at the south end. And that makes sense. Uh, but I also am concerned that if we, we start setting a level that may end up being a foot or so lower than where it is, you know, when it freezes, we have to worry about people getting in and out of there and equipment getting out of there. So I'm just asking in general questions about walling that off and continuing the recreation opportunities that we have today. Obviously, in the warm weather, it's going to be a lot easier to get, you know, opportunities for recreation. And in colder weather, I think we need to be careful um, just with a bunch of different things that could happen um, with the depth of the water versus access to the water or ice and all that, but yeah, I, 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 I guess it does make sense that shutting off the pumps and, and checking the, the levels and getting that set would, would help in that. So thanks for that. Abby? Yeah, a follow up question to what John was saying. Um, only option B on the comparison matrix indicates that a kayak or canoe launch would be possible. Um, is there any reason why those locations or a modified version of those locations wouldn't be possible in the other, in the other uh, options? As far as launching into the Fox River north of here? Yeah, or north anywhere along here and, and yeah. Yeah, um, obviously that would have to be evaluated based on like how large we want the land bridge first versus, you know, um, where vehicle access might be if you want to launch something rather than if you had to park here and you had to walk you know all the way this far with your canoe like that would have to be evaluated but I would say there are options you know for that in all the different concepts it's just trying to find and evaluate which might be the preferred location if it's desired. Yeah, I, I agree, Lacey. Um, a kayak launch can be effectively incorporated from a design standpoint on any of these concepts. Um, once we further understand, you know, what are our water depths and normal water elevations, uh, et cetera, um, the, the, the design examples, the opportunities that we're, we're, we're presenting, um, frankly, could be even be somewhat interchangeable um, uh, between the concepts. 
um, uh, you know, depending on what area we're talking about. So absolutely, um, a kayak launch um, uh, is possible under, um, is likely possible under any of these scenarios. I think we specifically highlighted in this concept because it's more used as portage in order to show that we have still access and navigability of the river when it's not in high tide. So if you're kayaking and you want to still be able to continue down river, we are providing some sort of you know, access by having these launches to be able to pull out and, and to pull it back in. Uh, I'm sorry, I have, I have a couple more questions. Um, in any of these options that we remove the dam or change the dam, it's going to speed up or slow down the speed of the river, right? Um, it's going to change the elevation of the river. What does that do further down south to things like Clark Island? If we lower the elevation of the river and speed it up, what particularly speeding up the river? Um, maybe this is a pat question. What does that do potentially to the quarry? I know we lined some things, but we talked about the speed of the river before. Um, so just downstream from any effect of removing the dam, changing the levels of the dam, changing the levels of the river itself, what is that going to do to our to our recreation opportunities down south? Sure. I'll let um, John, when he comes up, UBK, respond to that question. Yeah, the, uh, we're going to have the same amount of water going down the river when the dam is removed as to when it's there currently. Uh, and same amount of water running through the river downstream as there is now. So the, the velocity will stay relatively the same as it is now because you saw that same amount of water going through that same river section as it is currently now. So the only difference is water is going over the dam now versus when the dam's removed, it's running at a lower elevation upstream than it is currently. So the velocity would be roughly the same, approximately the same. And so the effects downstream would be, there would be any detrimental effects downstream. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, essentially with the removal from the current dam location, most impact would be upstream and essentially. So we're not gonna lower the, the, we're not gonna lower the elevation south, uh, downstream of the river? Uh, essentially at the dam, downstream of the dam essentially is elevation zero, where it'll be approximately at the same elevation that it is now and, downstream. And folks on the park district, didn't we have a study like this before that showed that the river sped up if we removed the dam? That there was issues potentially with the quarry on the speed of the river and what happens to the walls of the quarry that essentially butt up against the river? What I recall, John, was the... Um... <clears throat> that the uh, angle of, of decline from the dam to the south was about the same, that we were gonna slightly increase velocity, but that was before we put the liner in at the quarry. So that was part of the reason we did the liner project at the quarry, so that regardless of what happened with the dam or on the river's side, we wouldn't have any leaching or uh, water leaking or, or falling out of the quarry. Um, so we've kind of resolved that problem on our side, but there, there may be some impact. I think some of the flow rates that we were using before never contemplated the, uh, all of the stone that washed away from when, the, when Wilson Street Bridge was done that is now the front head end or the, the toe end of, uh, of Duck Island. So I don't know if that additional material in the river has any other impact on the, on the water or flow rate but there's certainly more more stuff in the river now than there was when the original study was done. Okay, thanks. Is there anybody else from the park district that has any questions? I do, it's Molly Connolly and I'm, I'm new to the park district. So this is all really fascinating to me. One of the, one of the questions I had, and I'm happy if you wanna point me in the right direction to, to do my research, is when I look at the different options um, and think about presenting it to the public, I'm curious about what kind of response we're gonna have. Um, certainly there's a history history there and I'm often surprised that uh, I get caught by surprise by reactions that our community has. Uh, so the two questions there are just a little, bo little bit more research for myself and then also in terms of, and again, if this isn't the right time to ask, presenting to the public, what does it look like? Because I do think 
you know, while the vision boards are helpful, there's, there's so much more information there. How do we present that in an effective way? Yeah, I think from, from past history, having been through this before, um, regardless of what we think, the public's ideas and public perceptions of what they think the river is going to look like, either one way or the other, depending on what, what option gets picked, is something that it's very hard to gauge. And I think that's something we're gonna try and do in the next phase of this when it does go public and we invite the public into here and have some boards up and have them look at it. Um, the, so I won't be the first person to be surprised by public no. opinion. <laughs> I'll, okay. I'll be interested to see how much it's changed in 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Lisa, I know that the community open house is uh, on the 24th of this month. But um, are there any dollar uh, estimates that are attached to each of these options? Because um, I've noticed the public tends to like one concept based on what they see, but then based on what they can afford, maybe it's another concept. Yes, yeah, and I mean, first slide. We, yeah, up here in the corner of all the slides, we've kind of, we showed at the very beginning as kind of a breakdown matrix for all of them, which included. Very Can you preliminary. pull that back up, Lacey, please? Can you pull the matrix back and up? I don't think that was in our email. Yeah, yeah it's, in, it's, it's on every slide, but you have to. It's on every slide. Oh, like that. Yeah, she oh. just enlarged it. Yeah. All pages. She just, yeah. 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 So this is, again, this is a very like high level estimate. Uh, it only pertains to what the cost might be for the dam removal itself. So some of this um, just pertains to, to that, what it might be to remove and restore. Um, based on you know, the dropping of the water level, et cetera, restoration. It doesn't include maybe any other, like, again, pumping. They didn't include any maintenance, um, operational costs, um, any additional proposed recreation elements that we want to include, any in-stream habitat features. You know, this is just kind of a very straightforward um, estimate, wide range, just for the dam modifications. So does dam modification include trail improvements as well as you know berms and that i understand it doesn't include the actual pumping but are you saying dam improvements and we have in your designs we have trail upgrades here does it include all of that or is it really just removing the rocks and everything from the dam or putting rocks in the dam and that's it right it's just removing the dam itself and um Obviously, when we did propose a berm, some of it does include like that kind of the berm cost, but it doesn't include any of the trails. It doesn't include annual pumping cost, um, or you know, include some restoration. Obviously, we anything when the water level drops and there's exposed land, we can I'm assuming we will be required to stabilize any of the exposed banks with you know vegetation, combination of vegetation, rock, etc. And so that's kind of what that includes, but nothing beyond just the bare bones restoration and removal. Yeah, another way to look at that, John, is that uh, um, like Lacey said, we're basically, these numbers would set the stage for design. Um, so it would create whatever the aftermath is of the river and the depot pond area fully restored, whether it requires, you know, a more extensive earthwork or some other type of treatment. But these numbers don't, aren't presumptuous to know what all types of improvements might we might want to put on which concept at this point. So we're just offering up some ideas on these vision boards uh, to get people thinking about that. But in terms of the cost comparison, it's really kind of the macro uh, waterway and infrastructure costs related to the, uh, the dam and depot pond relationship. Understood, thank you. I think the problem with that to Molly's point is it's gonna be very difficult to go to the public with this knowing that there's potentially, depending on the design, millions of dollars that still have to be put into one of these plans. And so you, you will find, uh, Molly, uh, that if we go to the public with something and have numbers that are not you know, true to that design, it's gonna be a very difficult conversation to say, okay, just removing the dam and, and making these dam improvements is going to be $9 million, but that's not going to include any of the trails. We're not going to have any grass. We're not going to have any open space. We're not going to have any launches. We're not going to have any of this without spending an additional X number of dollars. 
Well, how much is that X number of dollars? Well, it depends on the plan. We're not really sure. It could be anywhere from one to $8 million. That doesn't really go well. So I am kind of just to say, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that we don't have some better numbers as far as what each one of these plans would cost um, with improvements and so forth. Because like I say, it's going to be very difficult to go to the public with one of these options without some better numbers. Another approach we could take, John, is to remove all design elements whatsoever off of these vision boards and only focus in on the interrelationship between the dam, its removal and or replacement and the depot pond and, and get and seek input on that interrelationship versus clouding the, the, uh, the conversation, if you will, or the, the absorption of the information with design ideas. You're right, that would be much better um, because then we can talk to the possibilities. But if, if people see a trail, they're gonna wonder how much that trail costs and expect it to be in the numbers that are presented. You know, when they see a, when they see a canoe and kayak, kayak launch, they're gonna to expect to see that in the numbers or wonder what that costs. And that's, you know, for those of us in the park district, it's gonna be a little concerning because those are gonna be our things to talk about, right? So. Yeah, and I think we can make those adjustments, John. We understand your concern on that. We wanna be clear with the communication. And um, I know Lacey and I are already thinking about ideas, how we can, how we can do that. Um, the question, uh, uh, John, is are there any of these macro approaches between the, the, uh, the dam and the depot pond that we may want to omit um, in terms of seeking uh, public input for any reason? Did you say that uh, option B would likely not be approved for grant funding from IDNR? That's correct. That's I would say we open anything that would not get <laughs> grant funding from IDNR. <laughs> Just as an easy, don't even. Well, get that. I'd like a clarification on that because my understanding is the IDNR is going to pay for the removal of the dam. Because I will tell you right now, the only one that I favor is option B um, because it maintains all the recreation that's still north of there where people jet ski and do that kind of stuff. It maintains the pond and it creates an area that will actually create the ability to, in certain water conditions to paddle through. Um, I'd actually prefer to see it go a little further north to ease that step a little bit better so that it's paddleable all the time. Um, so I would, I would eliminate option D, getting rid of the pond and even yeah. option C, I think, I'm sorry, those option C, a six foot lower pond changes um, that dynamic um, everywhere. And option B is the only one that makes it like does very little change to all of the amenities that are out there, to the north, to the south, saves the pond, and it actually enhances what we already have. So I guess what I, what I'd say to that, Mark, is that the way the river is today, that's what Depot Pond will be if we leave the impoundment alone and don't change how we treat the Depot Pond. Because no matter what we do, with whatever we put back in the river, whatever dam is out there during low water, it's gonna be like it is today. Um, I disagree because the reason it goes so low today is because there's a breach in the dam. The water at low water level, because water is always flowing. The only reason it's very, very low right now in the depot pond is because there's no dam to hold it back. So it only lowers if there's no water flowing. So the, the pond, the, the dam is down, what, a couple feet right now? And that's why Depot Pond is down a couple feet because the water is not getting to the top of the dam right now. And, and I'm if not you push sure. that further north, you maintain the level everywhere because the water is always flowing. I don't know that the IDNR will go with the impoundment height that it is now or that it, that it would be with it going back up to its original height. And that's kind of where our uh, assumption assumption at this point is essentially IDNR's objective with removing the pond is to obviously create a free, free flowing river that allows for fish, fish passage as well as non motorized, you know, water, watercraft. Essentially, what this concept does, it 
it takes the current dam and essentially puts in a new one right here. And then we create obviously this nice feature that allows you to pass only through high tide, but essentially it, it is putting the exact same kind of impoundment, you know, dam back up at this north end of, of, of Duck Island. And so in that case, um, since it is creating the, maintaining the impoundment, it is unlikely that they will, will fund that type of improvement. But that wasn't that an option that they had 20 years ago? Yes, and that was their um, evaluation of this option as well. They also noted that it was likely to not be funded by IDNR. Can I ask so, the, so is not, can I just, sorry, one clarifying question ahead, on that, Mark. because is not the point that we're supposed to, part of the removal of the dam is for the safety, so you get rid of the low head dam, and then the ecology of the river, because fish can pass through. That still accomplishes both of those goals. I'd have a hard time believing that they wouldn't agree to that. And if it's more cost on the city and the park district, it's something we still need to evaluate because the citizens that I have talked to have made it crystal clear that um, they don't want to see a change in that depot pond. And lowering it six feet is a change. Making it smaller is a change. Eliminating it is a change. The only thing that doesn't change that aesthetic for people that have spent a significant amount of money in an area where you would expect, hey, I don't expect this water feature to disappear from in front of my house. Um, that's, that's a huge consideration that we all need to, to take seriously. Do we, do we have an estimate as to what percentage of funding they're even talking about? Mm -hmm. If you can restrain yourself, you can stay. If you're going to keep clapping, we, we're going to, I'm going to ask to clear the room. I'm not going to play the game with people tonight. I'd like to be able to let people talk and I'd like to let people listen. My question is, I'm just wondering, do we have any type of an estimate as to what the percentage of funding would be based upon the various options? Have they given us any idea as to, you know, what we're talking about, what we'd be looking at? When we talk with IDNR, they say that they will fund 100% of the engineering for removal of the dam and the construction costs associated with removal of the dam. All of it is dependent year to year on the um, level of funding uh, that IDNR receives in any annual budget. As far as I know right now, they have sufficient funding that they would be able to go after the next dam on their list, which is the Batavia Dam. So when we're looking at that graph up in the top left corner that was enlarged before in terms of the spreadsheet, um, would that indicate, knowing that these cost implications would be for removal and then building, so A, C, and D would be fully funded, your understanding? Or we no, nothing? because they, they still include um, features that preserve the pond. The, the IDNR will not contribute to anything beyond removal of the dam and the, the engineering in order to do so. Any type of restoration work that gets done would be on our dime. Oh, I thought Lacey said that some restoration where the banks would be exposed. Right. But yes, yeah, along would, the Fox River kind of going upstream, you know, where the water elevation currently would be dropping and there'd be exposed, you know, banks, they would that restoration you know, vegetation, et cetera, would likely be included in that because it would be required to, to okay. restore, you know, that, those banks with some sort of permanent stabilization. I have so, a question on that. In terms of the A, C, and D, which one would be mo the most funded, do you think? Does anybody have an estimate on that? I'll let John talk from WK. I think you had some comment to add to the last yeah, the, the funding, you know, like kind of to support what was said previously, ID not going to support and fund the engineering and the construction of the dam removal and anything associated with that, like the upstream banks, revegetating the banks, um, making sure there's habitat and, and revegetating up along the Fox River where we're dropping the water level. That's part of the funding to the IDNR. The additional funding and I believe for Carpentersville Dam, um, that right now is around three and a half million dollars. Just to give you a sense of what that cost is. Now that's a different dam, so I don't want you to hold on to those numbers really tightly, but that's just a, an order of magnitude of what 
dam removal and restoration of the bank's cost. Um, now the the other the the other items you know building of the berms and want to dredge out Depot Pond and fill in a portion of Depot Pond. All those additional costs um, kind of go into those numbers on the chart there. Um, so you think about possibly three and a half million of that total number would be funded by DNR. IDNR. Now these are rough numbers, so don't don't hold me to those numbers. But you know maybe a third of the cost isn't associated with that. And then back to option B, um, we'd have to consult with uh, IDNR about how much, if they would fund it and, have, and so how much, you know, they, they may fund removing of the dam, but, you know, creating additional dams upstream, I believe definitely would be the cost um, associated um, by the city and the park district as, as far as those costs go. So hopefully that sheds some light on the, on the costs. Yeah, so I guess that's that's the clarification I think you made, at least this is what I heard, is that they come in and they pay for the removal of the dam, period. They don't care what happens with anything else. They're just going to take that structure and move it away And in all four scenarios. So the cheapest scenario, the one that they would likely approve, is one that has no interference to the river, which is just tear it apart and let it flow and the dam or the depot pond disappears, and then we have to pay to do whatever we're going to do to, to save the depot pond in any option, whether it's building more weirs upstream, it's building a um, a uh, the berm, or it's dredging it out. So really, you're looking at that base number of the removal of physical structure. Am I not correct with that? Correct. I mean, the base number is removing the dam option. You know, I think you'd have to demonstrate in option B that you're still, um, you know, a safety issue, making sure that it's, uh, it's a safe um, alternative, building those upstream dams, and then ensuring that there is fish passage. I think those are some of the key items IDNR wants to see in a dam removal. I know we're running a little short on time. Uh, I, so my question is, I think um, the original 2000 study had, I don't know, five, five iterations with a couple of variations each of, of, of various options. Um, these are, you know, I think three interesting options of what was presented. Um, is there any reason why some of the other ones didn't get a little more attention uh, or that were like how were they prioritized to, to remove? And then the only comment that I had, so you can answer that question, just let me make one comment. Um, last we talked with IDNR before they kind of walked away from this, um, after the funding kind of dried up, um, they indicated that they would pay for the engineering and they would pay for the removal. We, we heard nothing that they would pay for anything more uh, on the re-implementation or any alterations that we would make to, to maintain Depot Pond, Berming, et cetera. So um, that's just my recollection from the, that, that discussion from 2000. Correct. And so some of the other alternatives that we did not include today were more focused maybe on the white water course. There were several different versions and iterations of creating like a white water course kind of starting from the north end of Duck Island right here, right into the cut. Um, and so some of those Obviously, we can still, kind of, if that is preferred, we can obviously, it's kind of some version of this. Um, but those are kind of several concepts that were not shown today, but are still kind of you know, op versions of these options. As far as the public meeting is concerned, you know, I, I feel, you know, frankly, infilling Depot Pond is really not a, a good option. Lowering it six feet is not a good option. Um, you know, maybe the better route is to eliminate those, but you know, maybe the honest route is to is to share that with the community and, and see what, what what reaction you get. But I would not be supportive of, of of those two, for sure. Yeah, I would agree with you, Pat. The last two, I'm definitely not in support of. I want to do whatever we can to preserve what's there at the Depot Pond. I just think we have to do this in a in a way that makes sense and something that I think. <clears throat> IDNR is going to get behind when we get to that point. 
Because I know that was one of the things when we went through this before, one of the things that ended up happening, the way they had it set up with all the little different jetties and weirs and things they had set up in it, we ended up with more concrete back in the river than we take out in one of the plans so that they could direct the river around Duck Island and, and make it flow all the way to the east side. And that was one plan that was pretty resoundingly shot down. Does anybody else have any comments? There are comments in the um, chat uh, from Park Board. Okay. If I could read those. Sure. Um, there's a question, when will this be presented to the public and who will be presenting it? And uh, the second one is June 24th was the date, I believe that seems very premature based on this conversation. Right, the current plan that's advertised is next week, Thursday, the 24th at 6 p.m. And it'll be Hitchcock Design Group who will be presenting whichever concepts um, the board and council decides from this conversation um, on what they'd like to show the community and garner feedback on. But we'll also be like facilitating, obviously, the, and gathering the input from the community. I also received an email from Alderman York, um, a resident, Dennis Storzak, had contacted him with a statement that he would like read into the record of tonight's meeting. Okay. You want to go ahead and read that? Sure. Dear Mr. Your Patricia and I are newly arrived in Batavia, having moved into the Quarry Stone Pond condominiums last year. Imagine our surprise when we find the river is planning on leaving us. I have just finished reading the results of the survey conducted by the Hitchcock Design Group, a survey we would have gladly participated in if we had been aware of it and several questions come to mind. First and foremost, why have landscape architects been retained to deal with an issue concerning a dam? Wouldn't this more rightfully be the area of expertise of an engineering firm? Second, why was absolutely no mention made of the depot pond anywhere in this survey? The question, how important is the dam to the identity of the city of Batavia is disingenuous. I would suspect that not one person in 10 of those responding to the survey realized that if the dam goes away, the pond goes away. If I didn't know better, I would suspect the whole sole purpose of this question, indeed the survey as a whole, is to give the city council some cover when they fail to act to save the dam. Third, what is different about the situation in Yorkville, where the state modified the existing dam to eliminate the roller undertow and added both a fish ladder and a canoe kayak bypass? Why isn't this an option for Batavia? I, review, I view the talk of building a berm and pumping water into the pond as ludicrous. In this day and age of green initiatives, the very thought of using non-renewable energy to fill the pond is really going to be a hard sell. I can foresee the situation where the state removes the dam, then the greenies turn on the pump plan and it doesn't get built. Instead, why not use the ultimate renewable resource gravity to keep the pond filled? I might point out that there, that it has a proven track record. It's worked just fine for the last 150 or so years. Much has been said about the water recreation and the materials I've read about the dam issue, but what makes the kayakers more important than everyone else? Dropping the river surface 11 feet in the roughly mile and a half when the Fabian Trail crossing bridge is certain to speed up the current, but there is great value in the still water of the pond. Where else can we take our grandkids for a paddle boat ride? Where can we teach them to kayak safe and assure they won't whirl off down the river? Certainly not in the East Channel, that's for sure. Since I started composing this email, I've spent a productive week of evenings reading through the alternative evaluation report prepared for IDNR in December 2000. I find it interesting that they had a plan alternative number one that turned the entire east channel of the river from above Duck Island to the present dam site into a whitewater rapids course, eliminated the dam and preserved the depot pond without the use of pumps. This alternative seems to have the most to offer all interested parties. It eliminates the hazards of the dam, aids fish migration, preserves the pond, and adds something that's sorely lacking in the Midwest, an actual whitewater recreation experience. This could only be good for downtown business, Face it, downtown Batavia just can't compete with the Third Street area of Geneva for artsy trade, but the Whitewater experience would give Batavia a different attraction. Certainly good for sporting goods shops, outfitters, restaurants, and pubs. Unfortunately, neither Patricia or I will be able to attend the meeting on June 13th, but we request that if a record of public comments is kept, this letter be read into that record. Dennis and Patricia Storzik, 148 North Water Street, Unit 203. Thank you. 
we have about four minutes left. Um, I, I guess if it was me, I would not want to see C and D presented because I just don't think that that's a, a real option. Um, I don't know that the public's going to want that. I don't. It sounds like the park district doesn't think that that's a great thing. I think you should leave it in. The people I've the, talked to have see what the response yeah, is. Yes, I would leave all four in and take out some of the development, like the recreation stuff. Just leave it bland and just get comments based on that. But I think it should be noted that that it's likely that B would not be funded. So this would be 100% foreign on the taxpayers yeah. and not grant funded. I think that should, I, that's I would important. want more information on that definitively before we tell something is not going to be funded. And if they're going to say something is funded, I would want them to have information saying, well, this part will be this will be funded this much. Plan C will be funded this much. You know, I'd want more definitiveness before we say it's not going to be funded. I mean, that's I don't think that's appropriate either. I think you need to have if you're going to talk about funding, you need to have more solid numbers or estimates that you can apply to each of the concepts. And I don't think until we have that decided, I don't think IDNR is even going to want to review it to tell us what they're going to cover. At what point does IDNR get involved? When when do we approach them and ask them those kinds of questions? I mean, does Hitchcock feel like they've got the background in doing this enough to know what's been funded and what hasn't? That we can trust their judgment? I that's why we have um, WBK Engineering um, on board. I'll let John would kind of respond to that, but they have extensive uh, experience with dams all over Illinois. Could you speak then to what he thinks the process would be with IDNR to look at approvals? Uh, we would have to go to them with a, uh, a, a concept or a concept or two and get their opinion as to uh, funding availability and, and what they would be able to fund and, and gauge their reaction. You know, they're, they're open to dam removal. I think A, A C, and D um, are very fundable. Option B is questionable about how much they would fund if they would fund um, any of it. So that would be really the, the option to discuss with them in more detail as far as uh, the level of funding for that option. Excuse me, um, the park district uh, has a seven o'clock park board meeting that we need to attend to. Yes, and we have a seven o'clock cow meeting as well. So I'm trying um, to figure out how to wrap this up so that we, we decide since it's a little over a week away that this is gonna go public. I mean, do we just leave all four of them in there? Anybody opposed to that? Hope we'll get a swing at it. I have no objection to it. Um, I think with the caveat that uh, both, you know, or at least the park district will, you know, we've made no decisions on, on one. These are simply uh, been provided to us for consideration. I don't want anyone to be this yeah, representation we're proceeding with any of these. To Pat's point, artist rendering, none of the trails and so forth have been talked about or, or you know, structures have been agreed upon and this is just an artist rendering of what could be. I yeah, I would just take out all costs because we just don't know what any of the funding truly is. I mean, I think we're guessing, saying well, that Mark, IDNR well, isn't going to pay for it. Well, Mark, more, just than don't just know. Funding, more than just funding, we don't know anything about these trails, whether or not they're going to be built, how they're going to be built, when they're going to be built. And as far as the park district, you know, I, I just, I would like a caveat in there saying that this is just an artist rendering and these things are possibilities and not anything that has been decided by the park district as far as building these trails, uh, you know, on this, on this property. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I think all the costs, yeah, it's a wide range where we eight to 12 million. Yeah. It's yeah. That, that's not a, that's not, none of that is insignificant. $4 million is not an yeah. insignificant amount of money, but when you're already in at 8 million, you're the, the we all know that the, the increment is not significant at that point over a 20 or 30 year period. Um, so it's, I would just keep money out of it for now. Okay, so, so what we're hearing is showing all four, eliminate any indication of trails, comp images, et cetera, and kind of leave off any of the cost in, information. Do we want to like rank them as far as cost or just not even kind of touch the subject? 
think you could take your low number on what it is and the high number and somewhere in the middle is where they all fall for the basics. And nothing is no dollars to me are known until you start doing engineering on it. And if you yeah, go and we'd say you're going to drop the level six, six feet and, you know, four feet down, you hit bedrock. That's a totally different story than taking out silt versus bedrock. So yeah, I, and we don't know what we'll have from grants, from funding, from IDNR, from other entities. There's all kinds of things any one of these options would would be able to get funding for. So it's to say something costs eight to twelve million dollars is people are thinking, oh, that's going to cost the taxpayers eight to twelve million dollars, and it may not be at a direct impact on Batavia taxpayers of eight to twelve million dollars. There is one last comment in the chat. Hmm. Is from Stephen Joy. If I understand correctly, the dam will have to be removed in all four options. That is the same amount of work in all four cases, but the belief is IDNR will not likely fund option B. Can we see if we can get the funding for option B? And if it turns out to cost us too much, fall back on a different option. Obviously, when we um, move through the planning process, I mean, obviously, when we get into the later stages, which is implement. That includes like detailed cost estimates and phasing for all proposed improvements. And so that Tim will give us a little bit more opportunity to have coordinated with the IDNR and to gather some of their feedback on what they will pay and about how much. So we will have deep, more detailed information as we move through the process. Just at this point, since we need to know, have some idea of the preferred concept to have a conversation with IDNR in July, that's kind of what this phase is seeking. All the more reason to remove the cost, I think, for the public presentation because it, it kind of, I think, it, I think it skews and mis misrepresents the plans, not intentionally, um, but it, I think, you know, again, based on what IDNR initially said, if they've changed their mind in the last 20 years, that they would pay for engineering and removal of the dam. That's the only thing they ever committed to. They never committed to paying for a, a penny more for anything, regardless of any of the other options. And I think we're still in that same boat. It's not as if uh, Springfield fucked the cash. Um, so I think the decision making, in my opinion, happens at the local level that we need to know what this community wants uh, this to be, assuming that DNR wants to get out of the dam business, which was the whole reason this thing started from the beginning, is they just wanted the dams removed in the Fox River to improve river health, et cetera. Uh, and, and a lot of communities have done a lot of different things. Um, and we're moving, in, we're moving in that direction to try to come up with a creative plan that satisfies some of the high priorities, not the least of which is maintaining Depot Pond. I guess the cat's already out of the bag because the, the numbers are up there on the screen and they're on our website, so it is what it is. So at this point, I think we will end our meeting. Park District wants to do that as well. Terrific. Thanks, um, Alan. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. Motion by Till and second by Riley. Yes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you very much, City Council. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Motion for adjournment. Motion to Second. Motion by Knapp. Second by Sulfa. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. This this meeting is over. We'll take a five minute break and then we'll start our call meeting. Thanks. That'll give me a chance to give you a chance fire to up the online. Online. So.